Uh, Illinois got a commit cart. Jason Jaxtis, I hope I'm saying that correctly with his last name. Three-star forward, 47th best power forward in the 2024 class. He's the seventh best senior in the state of Illinois. Uh, interesting offer list here, Cart. Kind of maps with the categorization of a three-star forward, though. According to 24-7, he had offers from Drake, Illinois State, Indiana State, and Lehigh. That's it. Eric Bossy, director, uh, 247 recruiting stuff, said now he may benefit from a red shirt. We'll be interested to see if other Big Ten schools step up. Other Big Ten schools did not step up. Uh, and then Jason himself has given this quote that uh, Illinois sees him as somebody like a Coleman Hawkins. I actually don't hate that comp from the film that I saw. Have you had a chance to watch any Jason Jackson's film? Should Illinois fans be excited about this commit? Uh, what do you make of this situation for Illinois? Uh, I think that honestly, like he's a rounding out a class type recruit. Like you take him, he's a project. He's definitely a four year guy. Hopefully he turns into a big 10 contributor. Um, so it's like a, yeah, we're good to get, get him, but it's not anything that's going to move the needle for me. I think it's just a guy that just rounds out a class. I mean, they got Merez Johnson, who I think is an NBA player in he's that good. class. He's really, really good. Like the Illinois fans have a, you know, a right to be very hype about him. I actually wasn't as familiar with him as I should be until I started seeing Illinois fans really talking about him. And that's kind of when I really was like, okay, I got to catch like some of his games. That dude's a monster. That's an NBA player. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good guy. I, it's, it's a take, I guess, in this case, it's a take. Hopefully he turns into something. If he doesn't, move on he probably goes to lee hire drake after after a year or two if he turns into something it's good it is what it is but from the tape that i've seen like he seems like one of the ross players of all time and not like raw like amazing like literally kind of looks like he just learned to walk at some times but very skilled i will say so you know i guess we'll kind of see what they got with him i like the tape <laughs> Are you shocked by that? I actually really liked what I, I saw. I, I am a little shocked that, that you like the tape. Yeah, I look, I, I feel like I've made myself notorious at this point on a string of sort of just negative comments on almost everything Illinois has done this offseason. I really didn't like their offseason. And uh, I did not expect when I see, oh, three-star forward commits to Illinois. Like, I did not go into that being like, this is a positive development. Uh, what I will say from watching the tape, I, I see... I see upside there. I do. I think he can shoot it a little bit. I think he looks pretty fluid. He definitely needs to tighten up and refine almost everything he does offensively on the court. Like it raw is definitely a word you could use. Um, it just seems not even like out of control, but it just seems like it's not, there's not a lot of like fluidity uh, or like direction with what he's trying to do. But when it works, it's like, oh, that, that was eye popping. Like he can get up, he can finish at the rim. Um, I, mean, I mean, like you said, it's a, not to cut you off. Like you see, he's like probably what Coleman Hawkins was before Coleman Hawkins put it together. Like he's just putting it together later than Coleman Hawkins. I guess well, the, that's the comp. You're the interesting with. thing to me, it, I've made this comp with Coleman before, and this is who I see when I watch Jason Jackson's tape. I see a younger DJ Wilson in Jason Jackson's tape. And Coleman and DJ was a comp I made quite a bit early in Coleman's career. Now I think Coleman has become a much better college basketball player than DJ Wilson ever was. Although DJ did get taken in the draft after really one season at Michigan, whereas Coleman, I don't think has the draft ceiling that DJ did. Anyways, long story short, like that's sort of like the stretch four. Could you play him at a stretch five? Yeah. Like he's skilled. He can shoot it. He can block some shots. He can finish at the rim, but never like, I don't think you ever envision Coleman even or DJ Wilson being like your best player. But if he's a guy who's like your fourth, fifth best player on the floor, that's usually a pretty good team. Um, Jaxtis, I think, needs – he has a long way to go to get there. But that is what I could see from him as like an upperclassman. Like, is he like the fourth, fifth option on a good team? Yeah, I think I could see that happening. Um, I do think like it's scary – uh, not scary because this is just a program take clearly, but like, I think you want your three stars. If you're Illinois as a program, you want your three stars to be guys that either other high majors sort of had their eye on or 
were so under the radar that they committed to you before they like blew up recruiting wise and jumped from three, uh-huh. three star to four star. I don't think that's coming for Jaxtis from what I saw. Like, I don't, I don't think anybody else big was going to offer him. I think Illinois like gave him an offer and he's like, I need to scoop that up if I want to play at this level. Um, but I don't know. Do you, do you think this is like Illinois finding a gem necessarily? Or I guess, why do you think Brad Underwood extended this offer? I think that, I think that Brad does think he found a gem. And I also, I don't know. I, I think the optics of it kind of look good too. I mean, I, it would look better if it was like a better in-state kid, but I think there's kind of some narrative that, and I, I truly don't believe it, but I just like heard it kind of in passing that like, Illinois kids in Illinois aren't staying in Illinois to play like Chicago kids, Illinois kids aren't really staying in Illinois to play. So I think that kind of serves them well. And to me, he's a guy who plays at like some small high school in Illinois. So maybe no one did see him. Maybe he does kind of shoot up, but I just feel like it's a take at this point. Obviously they see something. And last thing I'll say on this is I know, think back to last summer, everyone or Illinois fans were extremely hype about Zachary Perrin. And when I saw his tape, I was just not impressed from the start. Yeah. I was, I was actually saw some things in this tape that I saw on this kid and what he could be as far as being raw and having some type of talent. So like you said, it's a take, uh, you hope it turns into something, um, and you know, kind of, I guess, wait and see with him. (laughs) There's also something to be said, given the era we're in, in college basketball to like, I think you almost have to recruit some program guys more than you normally would. Because you don't like if you only recruit like high four star, five star kids, those kids want playing time immediately. And those kids also could piss off your other starters, which no program in Illinois knows more about or no no program in the country knows more about than Illinois. Like starters getting pissed off because there's a lot of competition here. Oh, no shit. Like I, you almost need to balance it of like a guy who's going to come in and not expect minutes and not need anything, but has some upside. And that balances your roster really nicely. You don't piss off the guys that are currently in the rotation. You can still recruit transfer stars over this guy without the threat that he's going to leave. So I think uh, you don't want to have too many of them, but I think this is a really nice ad for Illinois that does have some upside and makes a lot of sense for Brad's program, given where the program is today. So uh, credit to Brad, shout out to Illinois. This is the first time I think in a while you and I have both essentially both given a thumbs up to something Brad's done. Yeah. I, don't know. I don't know how we feel about that. Is that a good thing? <laughs> I don't know. Good job, Brad. That's, um, I think it is. I also credit to me for not going another route with that segment. I had many different petty jokes I wanted to make, <laughs> uh, take some shots and that's, I didn't do it. So credit to me, pat myself on the back. Good job. Uh, positive energy on this Monday.